In this video, we'll learn about weight and activity regularizations for neural network. We will also learn how weight regularization and activity regularizations are two sides of the same coin. We want to regularize so that we are not overfitting the particular model. What are we going to regularize with? In the non-deep neural network space, we used to typically regularize only the weights, but in neural networks, we have the option to regularize both the weights which is across all the layers, also called weight regularization. And also we have the option of regularizing activations and the output of activations which are in the hidden layers. And this is called the activity regularization. We will see in this video through a demonstration that both weight regularization and activity regularizations are two sides of the same coin, which means if you tweak the one, the other one also has an impact. Now, how are we going to regularize? The approach we will take is to use the well-known form of vector normalizations, which are L1 norm, L2 norm, and L1, L2 norm. In this particular case, we also must know what is L1 norm, L2 norm. And let me remind you guys, if this was our overall equation that we were trying to minimize, we have an error term that we're going to be minimizing. And on top of it, we have a regularization term. So an L1 regularization is fundamentally using the absolute value of the weights, the sum of absolute value of the weights with a lambda, which is the hyperparameter of the extent to which we want the weight of the regularization to drive our overall optimization. Now, for L2 norm, what changes is this weight penalty term changes. And what we have here is half the lambda times sum of the squared weights. So here we are running a squared weights, which is called the L2 norm. And when we have an absolute weight, we are calling it the L1 norm. Elastic net, which is one more variation, basically tries to bring a bridge between both L1 norm and L2 norm. The regularizations, which are fundamentally going to be encouraging smaller weights, because all these three methods, L1 norm, L2 norm, L1, L2 norm, are going to encourage smaller weights, because what we have done is we have literally penalized to ensure the loss becomes larger when weights are larger. There is another style of regularization that I want you guys also to be aware of, which we will cover in a subsequent notebook. And that approach is called forcing the weights to be smaller. And there are a few options in Keras and TensorFlow available to force the weights to be smaller, constrain the weights to not go beyond a certain level. And if it does go beyond a certain level, it is going to be putting it back to a default value. And there are four different options available which are maximum norm, non-negative norm, unit norm, and min-max norm. So that's on the very basics of what is regularization doing and what are the two main approaches available to us when we use Keras and TensorFlow. For our hands-on, let us now first take a look at the imports we have done. So initially this warning that we're ignoring, then we are having TensorFlow uh, dense layer, uh, sequential model, and then we are getting our stochastic gradient descent for our optimization. From a data generation perspective, I am getting the make blobs, which I have used earlier also for generating data. I'm having matplotlib for uh, plotting. And on top of it, the most important one I do have are the these two lines, which are Keras backend I'm importing. This is going to help us retrieve activations and because we want to see how activations are behaving. So this will help us do that. And then we are having the regularizers. We are having three regularizers at this stage, L1, L2, and L1, L2 is doing the same thing as the elastic net does. Now moving on, we have a class for data generator. And what this class is, is doing is three things. One is it is initializing the make blobs output into an X and Y uh, class variables. And then it has a train test split, which is using arrays, NumPy arrays, to index and retrieve and form the training and uh, testing X and Y variables. Okay. Then I do have a plot function for it which is fundamentally going in in a loop for every class available. It is going to be plotting me for a, uh, a different color, a scatter plot. Following that, we are going to be using that particular data generator class. So we are going to be initially generating 1,000 samples for two clusters. And we are having uh, the instance of the data generator class with 1,000 samples, uh, two clusters. And we are calling the plot function. Following that, we are also doing a, a train test split. This is the sort of output we get. So this is, we've really taken a very small data set in this particular example because we are going to be later on doing a lot of grid search. 
and I wanted to kind of cut down the time it, it takes to find the solutions. There was no other reason. Moving on, we do have a naive model class. So in this class, the important things are, initially it is actually instantiating a, a sequential model and it does have parameters for the weight regularizer and activity regularizer. So these two are numerical numbers I'm getting in. I'm setting up with a batch size of 128 and these are my uh, class variables. Compiled with stochastic gradient descent is, is standard. So I'm instantiating a stochastic gradient descent with a, a default learning rate and a default momentum. So default momentum I've chosen to be 0.66. And I'm compiling it with categorical cross entropy and an atom optimizer. The build sequential, which is actually the class which is building up the fundamental architecture of the model, has got a few changes compared to previous videos. And one of the changes is when it's creating my dense layer, this time it is basically having the kernel regularizer and activity regularizer instantiating to a L1 norm with the earlier initialized value of the weight regularizer, something that we have initialized when we had created the class, and also the same way we have an activity regularizer which we are instantiating it with an L1 norm for with a value of activity regularizer that was passed into the class. Okay, so this is staying standard for each layer. Now, obviously, when if you have a more complex problem where certain layers need regularization, certain layers don't need regularization, you would your code would be slightly different. So in this case, I have two layers. One is my layer with 50 neurons. Another one is my layers with 20 neurons. And then finally, I have my output layer, which is on the softmax. All my hidden layers and input layer are running on ReLU with he uniform as the weight initializing. Next, we have a fit function where we're taking in train and test x and y values for a given number of epochs and we are basically fitting the model what a model that we have prepared earlier using build sequential and we are after fitting the model we are fundamentally getting the activations from the model these are the mean activations it is going to be returning me so I'm getting f the first layer activation values and the last layer activation values here and storing them into my class variables I'm also getting the weights the mean weights of my first layer and the last layer. Though we will actually not be using the weights, primarily our analysis will be driven out of activations. The weights will be used for a different analysis that's part of another video. So let us see how we're getting the activation values. So for getting the activation value, we are going to be getting it for each and every specific layer. So that is an input we have. And then which is the model that we have currently trained is also an input. On top of it, we are getting in the batch, which is nothing but the training x array the, for which the model has been trained. We are writing a function using the Keras back backend or the backbone which has got a function uh, called k.function. Fundamentally it is taking two things. One is it is taking me the model layer itself and then it is also understanding whether it is a training phase or the test phase. So this second parameter k dot learning phase is just going to tell me whether it is 1 or 0 depending on whether we are training or testing phase. Following that we do have one uh, parameter here which is fundamentally returning the output of that particular model for that given layer. So what we have passed in for this k dot function is what are the inputs for this layer, what are the outputs for this layer and whether we are in a training or a testing phase. Okay. Following that we are using that function for the given train x data for us to retrieve the activations. Okay, So once we get these activations, we are calculating the mean across all the neurons, which is why I have it as x is equal to 1, to ensure that I am getting a mean value of all the activations for the given layer. Okay, So this ensures I have got my activation values. And I'm going to move on and show you the fit function where I'm actually using them. So what I've done now is in the fit, I have five important components. One is a fit for my validation accuracy and training accuracy with respect to epochs. So that is what I'm first plotting in here. Next I am plotting the first layer activations as a histogram which is using the dist plot. I'm plotting in the last layer ac activations again using a dist plot which is going to give me the histogram of all the activations. Following that I'm plotting the accuracy versus validation accuracy. A line plot for it to understand how nicely they are converging across each epoch. Then I'm also having the loss convergence using a absolute value of loss minus validation loss 
and understanding how that particular plot is, is moving forward. Then I have a utility function called naive model factory where I'm fundamentally creating the model class with all the different parameters that it, it is needed. In this particular case, it is taking weight regularization and activity regularizations. Then I'm also calling the build sequential, fitting the model, and I'm plotting the model. So now, let us try and use the naive model class with a grid search for a set of parameters and try and understand what are the right values we should be passing in for regularization for this given problem in hand. So in our case, we obviously are going to be using an L1 norm, both for weight and activity regularization. We are also going to be searching in a space between 0 0.6 and 1 e power minus 6. So I'm, that's the sp space I'm going to be searching. I'm keeping this search space fairly narrow because it does take time. And it is going to be now going into two for loops where it is going to iteratively try and run it for both weight regularization for a given value and activity regularization for each of those values. So let us see how the outputs come. First, we are running a weight regularizer with a large value of 0.6 and also activity regularization with a large value of 0.6. And this turns out results in really poor ac or a mediocre accuracy score and also a very large gap in between validation and training accuracy. You can see that the losses have converged at later stage of the epoch, about 80 epochs onwards it has definitely converged, but there is no learning after the 20th epoch. That is an important thing to know. And you can see from the first layer activations and the last layer activations, there is too much accumulation of activations at the early stage itself to zero. So this is becoming a problem for it to actually learn. We, w we would like to have a, a small distribution here, as you will see later, for us to really be able to explore that territory of activation. Rather, and we prefer to have almost close to zero in the last layer activations so that our probabilities are much, much more stabler. For so that's what we expect, and these two cases both are off. Next, let's move on and see what happens when we use a slightly lower weight regularizing, but we still continue to use the activity regularizer, which is very large. There is some distribution formation here, a little bit skewed. Again, the output, there's not much of a change. Convergence is, there is convergence, but you can see the validation of the train accuracy is, is all over the place. Next, we are going to be using a high activity regularizer value, a very low weight regularizer value. Again, this does not help us. So now we're going to move on and reduce the activity regularization value to 0.1 and we're going to try and understand how weight regularizations of high value is impacting us and there is something interesting going on here. And what we do see is when the activity regularization is reduced, our first layer regularization and last layer regular activation values are actually still continuing to be like how we saw earlier, but the way system has learned is different. It has definitely learned a lot more, it has reached an accuracy of about 80% and validation accuracy, training accuracy, convergence is also there, but it has actually it has missed the important minimas and it has started chasing in a really local minimas which are suboptimal, thus you have a very low accuracy score coming out here. And this is, this is generally the trend when you have a weight regularizer which is actually very large with activity regularizer which is very small. With mid values of weight regularizer and activity regularizer we do see that the system has learned it is much better and its convergence properties are better and it is getting where we want it to be which is a form of a distribution at the early stages of the activation layer and the last layer having more of zeros and some of the activations. Moving on, when we see very low weight regularization values for this activation particular value, again, it, this is resembling and it is only becoming a little better compared to earlier. Now we go into a territory where we are going to be having very low activity regularizing value and immediately we can start to see that the distribution formations in the first layer is there and it is going to be centered somewhere around zero and our last layer has got a lot of really being outside zero and but in a range of minus five to plus five. So this is really an ideal kind of a chart we want to see because we want to have sparse regularized activation values and we do want to see a rich distribution value at the early layers so that we know that we have explored many territories. But this is not still ideal because with a very large weight there is no real constraint here from a weight regularizer perspective what the system has ended up doing is it has gone in chasing in some of these local minimas which are suboptimal and thus it has really come to poor accuracy levels even though it found the solutions at the early stage.
So it is not retaining those solutions. And usually very large values will lead to this sort of a pattern. Now, when we have the weight regularizer reduced with the same activity regularizer of very low value, we are definitely starting to see this improvement where it has now not chased those local minimas, but it is starting to become a lot, lot more stabler. Following that, the last one combination we have tried is weight regularizer is also low, activity regularizer is also low, then we get the ideal learning that we are expecting where we do have a rich distribution in the first activations, and then we do have sparse set of activation values in the last activations. We have a very good convergence between training and accuracy from a training learning perspective, and we also have very good uh, loss convergence, and it too happens at a much, much earlier phase. So if you see here, it has learned most of it in the 10th epoch itself, so that's very good. So what we can summarize is high weight regularization value and high activation regularization values will lead to inability to learn high weight regularization values and low activation regularization values lead to convergence to poor minimus and low weight regularization value with low activation regularization value generally gives you the best convergence and also high accuracies